we got to be careful about the advice that we give and to whom we give it. You know, that standard go date your spouse thing, your kids will be thrilled when you come home happy, works in biological families, and it can work in blended families. But in some blended families, especially new ones where relationships are fresh and fragile, a happy couple is a threat to me as a kid. Hey, welcome. This is Family Life Blended, and I'm Ron Deal. This donor-supported podcast helps blended families and those who love them pursue the relationships that matter most. This is episode number 93, Ministering to Blended Families. Uh, what do you mean ministering to step families? I can't do that. Well, yeah, actually, I think you can. Okay, let me back up a second. Today, you're going to hear an interview I had on Family Life Today. That's the national radio broadcast of Family Life. We were talking about an online course that we've developed to help local churches start or grow a ministry to blended families in their community. It's the only online on-demand course of its kind. But here's the thing. What I know is that, sure, pastors and professional ministry leaders, they could learn a lot from this online course. But I also know that most of the ministry happening in the church today around the United States and around the world is being done by couples just like you. That's really the way blended family ministry started. And most of the time, that's still the way it happens in a local church. And nearly every one of those blended family couples who start leading a small group never thought that they would. (laughs) That might be you right now. No way I could ever do that. Well, maybe, just maybe, God is calling you to step out there to explore something. Who knows how you might be able to lead or contribute to a ministry in your local congregation. So, Our online certificate course in blended family ministry just might be what the doctor ordered for you. Hey, if nothing else, just listen to this episode and get a feel for what you could be learning. Since 1992, Family Life has had an international radio program called Family Life Today. I was interviewed for that program, and we're going to share that with you today. Now, the first voices you're going to hear are those of Dave and Ann Wilson, the current hosts of the program. By the way, if you're interested, you can find a local radio station that carries that program, or you can just subscribe to the Family Life Today podcast version of that radio broadcast. Just look for it in your favorite app. So here we go. Here's my interview on Family Life Today. We have Ron Deal. In the studio on Family Life Today, uh, talking about some online courses that you are a part of, Ron, who directs our blended ministry with Family Life. Ron, welcome back to Family Life Today. Thank you. It's always good to be with you guys. So here's a question for you. Have you done an online course? I have. I've done a bunch of them. You know, as a therapist, you need continuing education, and more and more of that is available online these days. So that's pretty frequent for me. I just want to know if you could do 10 (laughs) pull-ups. Um... (laughs) Um, I'm kidding. No. I'm kidding. But. Can you? Can you do it still? Well, here's the thing. When I did P90X, the first day is chest and back, and they you start with pull-ups. I could not do one single pull-up because they're hard. <laughs> yes, and they by are. by day 90, I'm doing 20. It was incredible what happens. You really do get better. So, obviously, we're talking about more like uh, blended you know, back courses. to the topic. <laughs> we want to help people get in shape in their relationship. Yeah, exactly. Yes. I was setting yeah. you up for that. That's what we want to do. So Family Life <laughs> has created a number of online courses. Guys, I mean, you know how this works. People can log on and from the convenience of their own home, go through these online courses on demand. What that means is you can go through it at your pace. You can work a little while at it and then pause and come back a week later. And, you know, you've chased kids and done all sorts of things in between and just pick up where you left off. And we've got courses about money, courses about marriage, courses about manhood and what it is to be a husband leading your family. And we've got two courses now specifically on the topic of blended families. One of them is designed for couples. It's called Well Blended, and that's going to help you build your marriage and your family. But the one we're talking about today is called our Certificate in Blended Family Ministry. And what's really cool about this, guys, this is 
the first of its kind mm. anywhere in the world, to my knowledge. It is an online course pulled from the best of the best presentations from our annual summit on step family ministry. You know, that in-person two-day event we do every fall where people can come and meet other folks doing step family ministry and learn all about it. And we've pulled out some of those key, call them the 101 courses, if you will, and we've bundled them together and created this blended family ministry course. It's going to help somebody understand the basics of ministering to step families in a local church, what the structure can be, the topics, things you want to address. We're going to try to help you think through how you get your ministry started. We're really excited about this because not everybody can come to our annual summit. We still want you to do that because there's things you're going to learn every year. There's new material every every fall. But this is a really a great place to start. I remember, uh, I don't know if you remember, Ron, speaking at that mm-hmm. summit with you. And actually, Dennis Rainey was there, I think, in D.C. I think it was near Washington when I spoke. That's right. And I remember as I sat in front of those couples in the room, I thought, man, they are committed, mm-hmm. not just to their blended family, but to training and helping other blended It was a room of people saying, I don't just want to do our family well. I want to help others, and I want to be trained in how to do that. It was really an equipping thing. And so now that you can do this online, perfect. Well, and I'll say, too, we have a woman at church that took the course online with her new husband, and they were blending a family, and she was on our staff. And she started this incredible ministry at our church for blended families. It was brand new. So many people started attending. So, Ron, are you saying that this course would be for someone like her? Like, she's she's a leader, and she wants to have this ministry. Or is this for everyone? You got it. It's really for everyone. Lay leaders like this couple Mm -hmm. that you're talking about, it's perfect for them, as well as, and I I just got to say, all the way up to senior pastors who are trying to get a vision for the audience they're speaking to every weekend. Who am I talking to? What are their lives? What are they living day in and day out? I need to understand that better. Youth ministry leaders, children ministry leaders who are working with kids all the time who are maybe in your children's program once a month because they're moving back and forth between two households. Like, how can you be sensitive to that? That's the kind of stuff. And those are the people that this would be appropriate for. Premarital counselors, people who are just trying to get a sense of ministering to couples and families and individuals in this day and age. And, you know, it occurs to me, we have to start this series with a theology of step family ministry. And that's important because we always need to go to the scriptures and say, all right, what do we find here that are principles that help us move forward in how we minister to people? And so one of the messages that we really want to bring to people, we're going to start with a clip from this message from Pastor Rob Boo, who at the time was senior pastor of Wheaton Bible Church in West Chicago. Uh, A little background before we roll into this clip. His first wife died of cancer He later married Rhonda, whose first husband had also died, and then they blended a family of seven kids. So Rob and Rhonda blended family with seven kids. Now, in the first part of Rob's presentation, he shares that they had a rough process integrating their family in their their home. Like many step families, they found it harder than they anticipated. And then he shared some of the stats that we know about step families. 40% of parents raising kids are blended families. 62% of couples in the U.S. under age 55 have a step relationship with either a step parent or a step child connected Hmm. to their their relationship. And about a third of all weddings in the U.S. today, at least a third, I think that's a low estimate of weddings in the U.S. form blended families. So he, he shared all that to kind of set up what you're about to hear. And then he begins to make a case for step family ministry. Let's listen. So why step family ministry? First, step family life can be hard. Second, it's a pervasive cultural reality. And now third, it's a river of mercy that flows from the fountain of God's mercy to a world that increasingly wonders if there is any mercy. The God of the Bible is not a single person God who like a great uncle is distant and indifferent. No, the God of the Bible, we know from the beginning of the Bible through the end of the Bible is a triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, who has eternally existed in perfection and majesty. 
as well as compassion and love. So we ask the question, why did this triune God create the world? Was it not so the Father could share his love for the Son with others through the Spirit? So that we, as his people, might share in loving the Father as the Son loves the Father by the power of the Holy Spirit that indwells us. This infinite, this unstoppable, this unfailing love directed towards sinful, fallen human beings is what the Bible calls mercy. So the third reason we give ourselves to Step Family Ministry, the reason we're intentional, we're sacrificial, and Step Family Ministry is often tough sledding, hard going. And the reason we give ourselves to this ministry is because it's a tangible expression of God's mercy. There's a truth that you rarely think about. Hmm. I mean, Rob hit it. I mean, it's like, yeah, I mean, this is what, when you minister to families like that, you are a tangible expression of God's mercy. It's a beautiful point. I was so struck by his statement. It's a river of mercy to a world that doubts if there is any mercy Hmm. left over for anybody. You know, when we act with God's love and favor towards other people, we're communicating God's mercy that he's given to us. It's a little odd to me, but on rare occasions, I've had somebody say something to me, something like, you know, aren't people in blended families there because of their own sinfulness? As if to Mm -hmm. say, well, you made your bed, you're just kind of stuck in it all by yourself, too bad for you. I don't really get that because that's a person who on some level has received God's mercy and then is sort of refusing Mm -hmm. to pass it on to anybody else. If we have been touched by his mercy, shouldn't we want (laughs) to pay it forward, to give it to others? You know, Micah chapter 6, verse 8, act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. You're not supposed to just kind of be merciful or tolerate mercy. You're supposed to love mercy, love other Mm -hmm. people receiving the same gift that you have received. To me, that's what Steph Family Ministry is. We do this in a lot of ways in church work, in local church ministry, ministering to people who are down on their luck financially or living in hard situations or got kicked out by a spouse and left destitute or, you know, all kinds of circumstances people find themselves in. And we say, come, you are welcome here. This is the church. This is the body of Christ. This is where you belong. Imperfect people are welcome here. (laughs) Well, that's what Step Family Mm -hmm. Ministry is. That's the theological foundation for it, that we start this certificate course in blended family ministry with just that foundation. That's what we stand on. That's what we're trying to do in local church. And we go from there. I remember, you know, Ron, we had this conversation decades ago, standing on the stage at my church and apologizing to the blended families because I had sort of missed that. I was often ministering in my mind to the married families to the one husband, one wife, to even singles and forgetting there's Mm -hmm. a whole. And and it's amazing because I was in a blended family as a young boy. You know, a good part of our church is a blended family. And often I'm not speaking to their situation. And, you know, you and I talked about that. Then as I sat there at the, you know, the summit, as you're training people how to minister to them, I'm like, I am putting Mm -hmm. my hand up like train me because I could be easily one. I didn't feel like I didn't want to give them mercy, but I just looked past and I felt like I needed to apologize and say, I see you because God sees you. God's Mm -hmm. mercy is extended to you. And the way you're going to feel that is when we, the people of God, extend that mercy. So what a a beautiful way to start with the the foundational theology, but I'm guessing you get real practical as well. The course gets real practical from there. And one of the things that we talk about is understanding the basic underlying dynamics of step family living, of being a blended family. And so here's a little clip from a presentation that I often do at our summits called Understanding Step Families 101. It basically gives leaders the basics in understanding step family living and how it's different from biological families. And it helps people check their assumptions at the door <laughs> and learn what they need to understand about working with blended families. Let's listen. 
So now what I want to do is I want to spend a little time talking about how step family living is different. Again, I'm trying to show you different points of view about complexity. That's the whole point of this is understanding complexity. So I'll, let's talk a little bit about biological families, traditional families that you, you're probably more familiar with and how step families can be different from that. Just to give you a, another snapshot, we'll do a number of these. Tripolator and percolator, what's that all about? Um, have you ever heard that phrase, as goes the marriage, so goes the family, right? That makes a lot of sense. And that's a dripolator observation, right? As goes the marriage, it drips down onto the kids and the parenting and the process of being a family and doing family life. Because you as the couple are the, the leaders, the guides to the family. And so if your marriage is struggling and you're fighting and you, they're at odds with one another, not cooperating, then it drips down onto everybody. In step families, that is true. But it is also true, the percolator, as goes the kids and the children and the parenting, so goes the marriage. It can go up. Wish I had a nickel for every time a couple has said to me, Ron, we get along great in our marriage, but when the kids come back from the other home, we fall apart. That's percolator. Because the kids bring stress, the kids bring something, and they're feeling whatever it is. Moms in the other home said so and so, and now this kid's coming back, and now they're being mean to the stepmom. And the stepmom goes to the husband and says, What do I do? And the husband says, I don't know. Why are you bothering me with this? Well, you're my husband. Why are you not on my side? Could you talk to your daughter? No, I'm not going to talk to my daughter. That's an issue between she and her mother. Well, no, now it's an issue between you and me. And it can just go like that. It starts in the other home, ripples through a kid into the step parent relationship. Next thing you know, it's the marriage. I would even say there's another dynamic and go side to side. So top down, bottom up and between homes, right? Stress just can ripple in a lot of different directions. It always ends up in the couple's marriage because they're the ones who carry the responsibility to figure things out. And that's hard on them. It's just hard on them. So anything we do that come along and help make sense out of that, to support them, encourage them, embolden their relationship, keep them secure with one another, even if they can't, fix anything going on in the other home, but at least that marriage is holding on, then there is a stabilizing force in the midst of all of that stress. Here's another assumption that we often have about family life, and that's that putting the marriage first provides stability and security for the kids. The way we like to say this, if you ever heard the best thing a father can do for his children is to love their mother. That's based in a a systemic understanding of relationships. Very true, very insightful. When a father loves the kid's mother, their marriage sets a climate and environment for him to love his children and for the children to grow up in a healthy environment where they feel safe and secure because mom and dad are together and they're safe in their relationship and they are the leaders and backbone of our home. And so everything just flows very nicely. But let me ask you this question. Would it be also true to say that the best thing a stepfather can do for his stepchildren is to love their mother? That's a really good question. And I want to know the answer. Me too. And the answer would be, eventually, yes, the best thing a stepfather can do for his stepchildren is to love their mother. Eventually, that's a long-term outcome. In the beginning, his love for her is potentially a threat to children. Wait a minute, wait a minute, that's my mom. I now have to share my mom with you. I really don't mind sharing mom Mm. with my dad because that's all as it should be. There's a unison there in us being a family. Because mom and dad are now divorced, I'm now having to share my mom with somebody whom I like, but I don't necessarily love. I don't really know where you fit in my heart, and I really don't understand our new family. And so it's a threat for you to love my mom. What a totally different dynamic. And that's a foundational difference between blended families and first families. This is why, guys, those of us in marriage ministry, like family life is all about, We got to be careful about the advice that we give and to whom we give it. You know, that standard go date your spouse thing, your kids will be thrilled when you come home happy, works in biological families, and it can work in blended families. But in some blended families, especially new ones where relationships are fresh and fragile, a happy couple is a threat to me as a kid. It has a completely different impact on children. 
And so that's why we talk about these unique differences in blended families. And I'm so glad you are. As I listened to that, Dave, did you feel this? Like, man, as leaders at our church, we missed it often by not being able to address these issues. And as leaders, knowing mm-hmm. how to address Makes all them. the difference, whether it's t- from the pulpit or in a marriage class or a parenting class. Yeah, so as you are training through this online course, how do you help? <laughs> I, I, I'm laughing because I'm like, couples like Ann and I that missed it, mm-hmm. how do you help them see the blended families that they're around every day and maybe haven't seen and and now that maybe they get to see and have a heart for it, they need to know, okay, so how we're going to in this them? course, turn the corner. So we're going to start with theology, like we talked about. We're going to talk a little bit about the unique dynamics of blended families. And then we're going to say, okay, practically, what can you do? And we're going to turn that corner and say, all right, in this case about saying date your spouse and come home happy, we're going to say, and if you're in a blended family, recognize that that might actually bring a different response from children. So don't be surprised when you come home happy if one of them is feeling a little envious or a little jealous or a little put out and they act up a little bit. Don't be surprised by that. You didn't do the wrong thing by going out on a date. See, when you just add that little part, all of a sudden this couple's going, okay, yes, it's still the right thing to do. We might see a different response from our children. It shouldn't keep us from dating. It shouldn't keep us from loving each other and the kids being aware of that. But we do have to step into that space with children and help them process their emotions. So it's advice plus, if I could say it that way, to help people. Mm -hmm. One of the big things we want to help church leaders do is just see blended families in their church, recognize that they're there. For years, I've suggested that churches on Mother's Day Use the word stepmom. <laughs> you know, hey, if you're a mom or a stepmom or a grandmother or a foster mom, if you're just volunteering and helping in our children's ministry program and you're loving on somebody else's kid, we want to thank you for the stuff that you do. Like, just use a word like that in a public setting at church it goes a long way towards affirming the stepmothers in the room. All of a sudden, they feel like, wow, it's okay to be me and to be here. I'm feeling weird about the day because. My stepchildren, I'm not their mother. They wish they were with their mother. They're here with me. And uh, they asked all the moms to stand. And I don't know if I should stand. You know, do I earn that position on this? It's an awkward day for a lot of people. And so when you say something Mm. from the pulpit, it helps adults. It helps kids. It's affirming. It says to them, you belong here. Little things like that are a part of the big picture of doing step family ministry. Yeah, and it's great. I mean, even as you say that, I'm thinking of at least 30 years of Mother's Days that Mm -hmm. I did as a pastor. And I always had in my mind, obviously the moms, but I always made sure and I told all our other teaching pastors, hey, make sure, you know, for some people, this is a hard day. Their mom has died. So mention that. I don't know if I ever said Mm -hmm. and mentioned stepmoms. That little thing that you just said is such a little thing. I can tell you stories about people that cried sitting in their church, just hearing that from the pulpit for the very first time. Just a passing remark, but it affirms, all right, we're in the right place, and God is with us, and our church is for us. That is a great, great feeling. Well, that's just the beginning of sort of the practical things that we unpack in this course to help people think about ministry. Of course, people can have classes or small groups or an annual weekend retreat for couples. We do Blended and Blessed here at Family Life, which is a live stream event every spring that gives your church a weekend thing to do for your couples where you don't have to put it all together. We put the content together. You just get to to borrow it, if you will, and use it as an opportunity to minister to couples. So it's very much a partnership. We at Family Life want to help to empower you and equip you. We have coaches that can come alongside you for free. As I mentioned earlier, our annual fall summit on Step Family Ministry is all about helping you get networked and find the latest resources, what's new in research, and just connecting with other people who are also in this space doing ministry. Uh, we're all about supporting the local church as you love and support Step Families. Yeah, I would just add, way to go. I mean, like you said at, at the beginning, I don't know if there's anything mm-hmm. in the world like this. You would often have to get on a plane or car and get to a summit, which is awesome and still something I would encourage people to do. But if you can't, 
you can do the next best thing, which is almost the best thing. Do it right in the family room of your home. You could even bring some people over to your house and be trained together uh, through this online course. Thanks. Way to go. I and if you're listening great. today and it's not you, but it's someone you know and love, tell your pastor, tell your children's ministry leader about this online course. Get them interested in it. Thanks, Ron. You've been listening to my conversation with David Ann Wilson on the Family Life Today radio broadcast. I'm Ron Deal, and this is Family Life Blended. Now, if you want to jump into that online course, it's really easy to do so. Just look in the show notes. It'll tell you how. Now, this course, I got to tell you, has been drawn out of our annual summit on step family ministry. It's really the basics of step family ministry. If you want to go beyond that, come to the summit. Each fall, we bring together leaders and experts from a variety of disciplines and churches so you can network with others and learn the latest strategies about working with blended families in a local church. The certificate course will get you started. The summit will keep you going. This year, the summit's going to be in Phoenix, October 13 and 14, 2022. And our theme is Reveal Grace and Loss in Blended Families. Every year, we have a different emphasis to the summit. You're going to get something new every year if you keep coming back. This year, we're really going to focus on loss and its impact on individuals, on couples, and on the family as a unit. Again, this is an in-person event only. It is not live-streamed. So get it on your calendar and make plans to join us. The show notes will tell you how. Last spring at our live stream Blended and Blessed event, a step parent asked this question. Even though I'm not their parent, how do I get them to do their chores? <laughs> That's a good question. A lot of people are asking that. There's a lot of layers to this question, and I'm going to give you the basics. If you want to learn more, I really spend an awful lot of time talking about step parenting authority and discipline in my book, The Smart Step Family. So I would refer you to that. But essentially what this person is asking is, how do I have authority to get the basic things of life done in my household? Okay, so here are a few of my thoughts. Have you ever noticed that babysitters can get things done? How does that work? I mean, they're not a parent, but they can sort of be in charge while the parent is gone. Well, that's how babysitting works. And what makes it work is that the parent says to the children, look, the babysitter's in charge while I'm gone. Okay, let's use that. You know, in the beginning, step parents are sort of like that. You're a babysitter. And the biological parent, your spouse, is the one who sets you up for success by telling the kids, look, while I'm gone, they're in charge. Now, that helps a lot. You're still an adult. You have adult status but you don't have parental status, not until the relationship has really been developed. So on day one, you need to function like a babysitter and you need to have the support and the backing of your spouse. Because without that, well, the kids don't have to respect you and they, at least one of them won't. So it's really important that you be a team in that way. Now, the other thing that makes it work is babysitters just support the household rules. Right. So if you as a step-parent are enforcing the household rules, in other words, if the parent was in the room at that particular moment in time, they would give the same answer to the child. And if you are consistently supporting that expectation, then you can expect the children to obey the household rules. Again, it's not like they're obeying you. It's more like they're obeying the household rules. And if my mom or dad were here, they would tell me the same thing. That's just the way it goes. That's a great way to get life started as a step parent. And that way you're not having to sort of force yourself into a parental role that you haven't quite figured out yet and the kids haven't quite given you the credit for. That's a good way to start. Now, if they give you grief, and again, usually one or more will give you a little bit of grief, then you make sure that your spouse has got your back. At the end of the day, a babysitter only has authority if the parent has their back. I remember when our kids were young and we had a babysitter, you know, they would disobey. They'd push the limits. Absolutely. And then when I'd come home, they'd get double trouble from dad for disobeying the babysitter. That was my way of backing up the babysitter. Now, the next time the babysitter came to our house, 
our kids knew, <laughs> disobey her and you're disobeying dad. And it got easier and easier and easier. Now, there's always some challenge. But if you work together, you can find your way through. Again, if you want to learn more about that, pick up a copy of The Smart Step Family. By the way, if you've got a question or a topic you want us to address on a future episode, you can email us, blended at familylife.com, or you can leave us a voice message. The show notes will tell you how you can do that. And man, if you haven't subscribed yet to this podcast, please do that. We don't want you to miss any of the future episodes, and we've got some great things planned coming up. So just look us up on your favorite app or on the Family Life app and follow us, subscribe to Family Life Blended. Now, next time, you're going to hear from a variety of our previous guests on this podcast, people who have been blending for 10 years or more. They're going to be talking about life once all the hard work of merging is over. That's Blended Families 10 Years and Beyond next time on Family Life Blended. I'm Ron Deal. Thanks for listening. And thank you to our monthly donors for making this podcast possible. If you'd like to join them or just say thank you for what you received in this episode, just look in the show notes for a link. We'd appreciate any donation of any amount. Our producer is Marcus Holt, our mastering engineer, Jarrett Roski, project coordinator, Ann and Caro, and theme music composed and performed by Braden Deal. Family Life Blended is part of the Family Life Podcast Network, helping you pursue the relationships that matter most.